Welcome to Pluto Part 2. So, in the last video, which I recorded almost exactly two years ago, I had three slides. This one, this one, and this one. Of course, you already watched that video. So, what I think is going to be pretty interesting is comparing what I, what we knew, of course, that we knew more than what I put in these three videos, but sort of what we knew at the time compared to what we've discovered since then based off of the wonderful New Horizons probe which flew by very recently. Um, so I'm going to be talking about some new things. Not everything in the following slides uh, is completely new or discovered by New Horizons. Some things we knew, some things we sort of knew roughly but were refined since, uh, since then because of New Horizons, but um, some of the stuff is, uh, is quite new, things that we could never have known. For example, uh, what did Pluto look like? Before July-ish of this year, um, this is all we knew. Hubble, the uh, wonderful telescope we have out in space right now, which uh, soonish to be not necessarily replaced, but, you know, um, outdone in many ways by the James Webb Telescope, which is being built currently. Uh, this telescope, Hubble telescope, took this picture of Pluto. And actually, this is smoothed out. This is really, well, I think, what was it, like 20 something pixels? <laughs> so, not much, not much. Um, take that, and, and this may, I'm not 100% sure, I just actually just noticed this now. This may actually be lined up. This might be, this bright spot might be this right here. This dark spot might be this. This dark spot might be that. Uh, maybe. Actually, the more I think about it, the more I think that might be the case. But anyway, that's all we knew before in terms of looks. And this is just one of the many pictures we, we have uh, from New Horizons that show what we know now about the surface. Pretty cool. And uh, this is just early data. New Horizons is very slowly sending data back, so we won't get all the data back for quite a while now. We've only gotten gotten a small percentage of the data back, so um, that's pretty neat. Here's a picture of New Horizons, uh, an artist rendition of what the probe looks like, and it's got quite a few cool instruments on here. I'm not going to go into detail about these instruments, but if you're interested, you can definitely look that up. But let's take a look at what New Horizons, uh, the, at the trip that New Horizons took to get out to Pluto, and also um, what Pluto looks like in the system around Pluto with its moons, what it looks like, and let's do that in eyes on the solar system. Alright, so here's eyes on the solar system, and this is currently set as now, so if I zoom out real quick, you'll see New Horizons has passed Pluto. But um, New Horizons was launched, let me pause this, New Horizons was launched on January 19th, so January 19, 2006, 10 years ago. Where were you 2006 on January 19th? Well, probably in school-ish. So anyway, we are there. Now let's zoom in on Earth, because that's where it's launched from. Let me pause for a sec here, clear it up a little bit. All right, so we're zoomed in on Earth. And it's January 19th, 2006, around 2.30 p.m. So if I hit play, um, speed time up a tiny bit. Pretty soon New Horizons is going to be launched. Bam. So there it is. I'm going to zoom out to the solar system. In fact, I'm going to make the solar system the center of attention here. And let's speed time up so that it's about maybe a week goes by every second. So you can see at this rate, New Horizons is making some progress. New Horizons is the fastest probe we've ever sent out. It made crazy time to Pluto. You can kind of see where it's headed. Um, we set the trajectory up such that it's going to pass Jupiter, exactly pass Jupiter and Jupiter will give it a nice boost, speed it up, change its direction, so that it redirects towards Pluto here. 
so we can catch up to Pluto. So we'll take a look at that gravitational boost slingshot. Maybe I'll go to a little faster. Two weeks per second. And let's pause this. And zoom in on Jupiter. And watch as Whoa, <laughs> the moons are going around like crazy. New Horizon zips around. See that? That's pretty cool. So let's center back on the solar system. I love this program, Eyes in the Solar System. If you have some free time, you should definitely check it out. You have to download it now. It used to be just a web browser sort of thing, but now you, it's sort of a separate program because they wanted to add some functionality to it that I don't think a web browser could handle. Uh, here you got the Voyager probes. Those were launched back in 1977. So let's speed time up a little bit more because it's going to take a while. We're only in 2008 and it took until 2016 for New Horizons to reach Pluto. So I'm going to just do this type of fast forward here. Almost made like a beeline, just almost straight towards it. When when it got a slingshot from Jupiter, it um it really sped up the, the probe quite a bit. Getting close. We're in 2014 already. That was quick. Whoa! Oh, too much. Let's go back. All right, April 2016. So that's too much. Let's pause here for a sec. Let's focus on Pluto. Zoom out here a bit. And wait, 2015. Way ahead. That was. That's the future right there, man. There we go. All right, so April 2015, New Horizons is getting sort of close. There it is. You can see Pluto is going to be moving up in its orbit here, and New Horizons is going to intersect right around there. So now we, if we hit play, and we'll start to slow things down. Two weeks per second is a little too oh, a little too quick. Hey, the Fourth of July. Da -da -da. much time here. It's coming in from up here. Doo -doo -doo. Pause. And let's watch it as it passes by Pluto, takes lots of pictures. So because it was going so quickly out and because Pluto is so small, there was no way for this type of tra trajectory for Pluto with this type of trajectory for Pluto to actually capture New Horizons. Um, so all we could do is a flyby. And you'll see that. Oh, geez. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. Where am I here? Yeah. Alright, so you can see how close New Horizons got. To Pluto, and we'll just do right here. Anyway, uh, I should probably practice more before I show this, but but it did a nice flyby. So what did it see? So you can see the path where it flew by. If you zoom in on Pluto, it saw most of this side of Pluto. You can see that we still have no idea what this side of Pluto looks like, which is frustrating in one sense, but kind of cool in another, because maybe someday, probably quite a while from now, but maybe someday we'll actually map this side of Pluto. But that's that's a pretty good job for just a flyby. And um, we also got some pretty good pictures of Sharon, Pluto's quote-unquote other moon, big moon, like major moon, but some people consider it 
like a binary planet, so the secondary, the second planet of this planetary system here. But we still don't know what the back of Sharon looks like either. Anyway, I'm going to come back to this uh, in a sec, but let's uh, continue on. Um, so that's a nice little rendition or a nice little overview of um, how New Horizons get out to Pluto. Oh, actually, um, one thing I can do, let's go back real quick to the solar system, is uh, they're currently trying to determine uh, the next mission for New Horizons. First, whether it's going to even happen, and secondly, where it's going to go. And so, um, Pluto is out in the Kuiper Belt area most of the time, anyway. And so, there's a lot of other objects out there that New Horizons could potentially go see. And so, where? Oops, disappeared. Where is it going to go? This this uh, simulation goes out to like 2040 something, but they only went ahead till it looks like. So here's New Horizons. It'll disappear probably around when was it? Bye bye around 2017. So don't quite know where it, it's going to be headed. I don't know if they can redirect too much. Maybe I'm sure they have some fuel on there where they can redirect a bit. But anyway, yeah. So um, actually, I, I kind of just mentioned this a couple minutes ago. Currently, it's fashionable to rec categorize Pluto and its biggest moon, Charon, as ice dwarf. So Pluto used to be one of the nine planets. When I was growing up, Pluto was the ninth planet out. Uh, and that made sense for me and most people back then. But since then, other objects have been found, but in particular Eris, um, which isn't, it's just slightly, slightly smaller in size than Pluto, but it's more massive. And so you might say, well, if Pluto's a planet, why not make Eris a planet? I mean, Eris is, is more massive than Pluto, right? So um, there is this whole debate on whether Pluto should have been demoted, but it did get demoted from a planet, and currently it's fashionable to call it, it and other objects like it, even its moon Charon, as an ice dwarf, compared to the four inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, which are considered rocky planets, and also to the four outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, those are considered gas giants. Uh, Ice dwarfs are large bodies where most of their surface contains icy material. On these planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, um, they're too warm for a majority of the surface to be icy. The majority of the surface on these planets is rocky. Not to say that there isn't ice, at least on uh, Mercury, Earth, and Mars. Venus, with its crazy greenhouse uh, atmosphere, thick atmosphere, can't really have any icy material on it. Um, and again, like I said, some people also like to consider Pluto and Charon as a binary planet system because their common center of mass, I don't think it shows it on eyes in the solar system, but their common center of mass is not inside Pluto. Charon is uh, extremely big in, rel in relation to Pluto compared to other moons, even compared to our moon and Earth and our Earth. But So the center of mass of these two objects is outside, it's not inside Pluto's surface, it's outside, and so some people would would say if that happens, then Charon is probably too big to be a moon, it's more likely to be considered a, a binary planet system, just like we consider two big stars orbiting a common center of mass to be a binary star system, and we'll talk about that next semester. Um, but even if Charon isn't considered a moon of Pluto, Pluto has four recently discovered moons. I think the the farthest back discovered one was discovered in 2005. Um, but these are the other four moons, and they're they're pretty tiny. I think the next slide has pictures. Yeah, pictures of that. So Charon, uh, what a beautiful picture taken by New Horizons. Look, look at all the features. Crazy features. Looks like it might have been a huge impact, maybe. Uh, but anyway, Charon is pretty big. This is uh, this line here is a 10-mile scale. So you can see Styx and Kerberos are quite small. Nix and Hydra are also pretty small. They're they're too small to have um, become circular in shape. More like probably captured uh, comets or captured Oort cloud objects. But um, so it looks as though currently. Uh, 
best we can tell that Pluto has four small moons and a big moon, Charon, or possibly you might want to consider it a uh, dual planet system. I think I'll stop the video here because uh, that's at 15, the 15 minute mark and continue on with the next slides in the next video. All right.